Instagram and we are the Ripka Twins. Welcome back to our channel. Today guys, we're sharing with you our secret of how to hold a handstand. Now, so many of you have actually requested this tutorial for ages now and we're finally doing it. Yep, yep, yep. So we will be sharing and showing you our tips and tricks and exercises to help prepare you for your handstand. So many people want to be able to balance and they want to know the secret of how to balance. So by the end of this tutorial, hopefully you'll be able to hold a handstand or you'll be a little bit closer to holding a handstand. Maybe we can help you in some way. Before we get on with the tutorial, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already and give it a big thumbs up if you like it. And don't forget guys to click that grey bell next to the subscribe button so you are notified every time we post a video. And be sure to follow us on all our social media so you stay up to date with us. And don't forget to share this video if you like it. So today we are focusing on the bent back handstand. Enjoy watching if you've never tried this before, maybe give it a go. So first of all, you actually have to prepare your body for a handstand. And how you do that is strengthening exercises so that you can actually hold yourself upside down. Yeah, because you are holding your entire body weight on your on arms. Your arms. exercises a few times a week or every day to build up your strength. Second of all, you need to make sure you have loose wrists. You want to lengthen those muscles around your wrist because when you hold a handstand, the angle that your wrist goes, it's quite tough. <laughs> it's quite a right angle. It's really important to warm them up. Yeah, so you just do simple exercises like this, grab your hands, go like this. You also, can even do this. So where you put your hands on the floor and then you bend your elbows back and that gives here a really nice stretch. And you're ready to handstand. I'll just simply do this. By the way, we're totally filming it up from someone's house. <laughs> Hi, we found this place. I know, it's pretty cool. It's got like the boat thing, so thumbs up for the background. So we're gonna show you a little exercise that gets your fingertips ready for your handstand. So basically all you're gonna do is put your hands on the ground like this and you're just gonna put a little bit of weight on your fingertips. Just pretend you're a monkey and be like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because your hands actually help, if you're about to fall, you use your grip on the floor rather than just going over here. Try and hold yourself with your fingers. Placement is so important in a handstand. Basically where your body has to be placed. So when we teach handstands, we actually get everyone to kick up from the ground, yep. not from standing. Yeah, because that's already putting off balance because you've got so much like momentum. Yeah. So just place your hands on the floor. For example, Sam, yeah. place your hands down on the ground. Okay. You're going to want to make sure that your fingers are really spread. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> then you're going to want to make sure that your shoulders are placed forward over your fingertips and you'll actually feel the weight all on your fingertips and then your head is placed up yeah so not down up yep so you're looking at a spot on the floor just in front of you so you place your hands down your shoulders are forward you feel the pressure on your fingertips your head is up now when you actually kick you have to make sure that everything stays in line like that just like that and you kick up nice and slow with the split leg and your second leg comes to meet your first leg just like that Make sure your first leg doesn't go over too much. Yeah, because then you're just going to go over. Yeah, so for example, like, this is my first leg. My body's in the position. Kick up. Make sure it doesn't go too far. And then the other leg comes to join. Slowly. So this is how not to kick up. <laughs> so guys, when you kick up, you want to make sure you're kicking up nice and slow and controlled. Otherwise, you're just going to go over. to kick up use a wall so that you can lean against it massive tip too when you're practicing with the wall look at the wall all right so Tegan is going to place her hands correctly first head up shoulders forward and then she's going to kick one leg then the other onto the wall now obviously Tegan has lots of experience and she kicked up with control maybe at the start you're not going to have control but try <laughs> 
<laughs> we have to be careful because this is not our problem. Each time you kick up, try and control your kick up so that you don't like smash your feet against the wall. So control. So go slow and keep your head up. You can also use this as a strengthening exercise. All you have to do is practice staying in your handstand. So hold it for as long as you can. Then when you need to come down, you come down and then kick up again. See if you can hold it for longer. Another reason we like to use the wall is because you can actually practice balancing on your own. So Sam's just going to pull back a little bit, take her feet off the wall and see if she can balance there. And then if you feel like you're going to fall over the wall, so there to catch you again. Yeah, this stops you from going over and over and over and over because the wall stops you. So then you just keep holding yourself, come up, hold yourself, come up. Yeah, it's just really important to pull back slowly. Do everything slowly so it's nice and controlled. Make sure your hands aren't too close to the wall because you will be doing more of a straight handstand. <laughs> like this. Okay, so make sure your hands are about a foot length from the wall. Like so. Do not do this. <laughs> See how Tegan's bottom is on the wall? Nope, that's incorrect and head is not looking up. There we go! Woo! So all you have to really think about is your placement when you're using the wall, which is so important. Everybody has a balance point. You have to find that balance point. And it's kind of like a muscle memory thing. Tegan and I know exactly where to balance just because We've done it so often now, so we just We don't it. even have to think, you just put your legs up and it goes to that balance point because of muscle memory. So you have to practice enough so that you find that balance point and then muscle memory. This next tip is probably one of my favourites because I remember when I was learning how to do a handstand, my mum told me about this one and it's like ever since she said that, I could it's like do a it. light bulb. I love this one. Are you ready guys? Ding! So the light bulb moment for me was my fingers. So I'm just going to demonstrate how important it is to actually use your fingers to help you balance. Yeah, like you grip the floor, push against the floor when you feel like you're going to fall over. Try and hold it, don't just let yourself go over. So see how the hands are flat and then Tegan's gripping with her bent fingers. <laughs> if I went to go over, my fingers actually like save me from going over. Look at those bent fingers. If you find that you're really struggling to balance with two legs together, you can actually balance like in a stag position and that's going to really help with your balance, like your counterbalance. Because if you think about it, someone who's walking on like a tightrope, they use the bar to actually balance and yeah, like can do or it. Or anything, you're more balanced when your arms are out and same with this, because your legs are out, you have more balance. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> so if you're really struggling with two legs together, try this one. So same thing goes, same placement with your shoulders and hands. But you kick up one leg straight and the other bent. So yeah guys, that way is definitely easier to balance. So maybe try that first before you do two legs together. So once you're really confident with your stag balance, you'll find that you might even be able to slowly bring your other leg to meet your other leg and you'll be balancing the two legs. Yeah. So as Tegan slowly stretches the bent leg to join up to this leg, this leg slowly comes up to meet in the middle. So rather than this leg coming over, you fall over. They're both kind of meeting at the center point of your balance. One of our final tips is straightening your legs with pointing your toes because that's the difference between a good handstand and a not so good one. Yeah, so we're gonna show you guys a little bit of contrast. Now remember guys, it's all about practice. You're not going to find your balance or master your balance unless you practice it. So go outside, go inside, go to your dance studio, go to your gymnasium, practice all the time. Do it at school too. Practice everywhere and anywhere and you'll get it. It's all about determination and doing it over and over. Don't give up, keep practicing, you'll get it if you persevere. Yeah, and it's honestly the best feeling, especially when you first start to find your balance and can balance like nearly every time. It's such a cool feeling because you've really accomplished something. Yeah, you work towards something and you've got it. And then you can play with all different shapes and different tricks. You can balance on things. We love balancing on our hands.
the tutorial and we hope you learned something. Yeah, we really hope you learned something. Even if it's just one thing that can help you get a little bit closer to holding your hands. Yeah. Comment down below what has helped you get your handstand. If you've got a different tip you'd like to share with the community on YouTube. So remember, we also post on Squared every single Monday and we post on our channel every Thursday. So we'll see you guys next Thursday. See ya!